hello guys welcome to the another video of this interview series so in this uh, uh, in this tutorial or in this video we are going to discuss about uh, TCS Selenium interview question so this is not the recent interview I mean uh, last year I mean I discussed uh, two or three guys who I mean who are into the automation who used to take interviews so i consolidated all those things like uh, these are the questions that they used to ask to the candidate so i consolidated all those questions that might come when you are facing tcs interview so basically when i present um, the interview i mean this interview series on the basis of companies then it doesn't even matter i mean these questions will never ask for different company so you can see some there are some common interview questions and uh, when you start giving interview you will see like uh, many of the questions are repeated so that's why companies matter but i mean the pattern that company use for interview that matters but the question they are almost i mean 50 or 60 percent same i mean among all interviews so let's get started so the company name is tcs and uh, the position is senior automation tester experience is seven plus years of experience maybe the ranges uh, could be five to uh, five to seven plus years experience and questions uh, are related to current project and what is your role in it so obviously how you can explain your roles and responsibility what you did or what you do on your day to day activity like uh, writing test cases updating script or execution of test cases following some module some methodology attending scrums giving demo and all those things that you guys used to do so just explain uh, mainly i mean mainly you have to explain about what you do so next is uh, related to test ng so annotation what are annotation used in ten test ng so somebody asks you annotation i mean you know about all those annotations like before after and all those some data provider including data provider parameterization and something like that even if somebody asks you about the sequence of these annotation like how be at the rate uh, before suit before class before method at the rate test and then how these things are propagating or following like so you need uh, know about all those annotations and <clears throat> how to execute parallel test so in executing your test case parallel obviously you should have the test ng.xml the first thing that you should keep in your mind that you need to execute your script through test ng.xml file where you will have the classes that you will be using for test or executing your test in parallel mode and there you can uh, update one parameter like parallel equal to method parallel equal to class and the invocation uh, not in verbose like uh, how, uh, and thread like you want to update two thread as a parallel you want to see four thread as a parallel so there are something that you need to know suppose i have only two test cases or five test cases and i have mentioned like run my test case my three test case in parallel so what will happen first it will pick three test case and second only two test cases are remaining then how it will find those two test cases next is if i have two test cases and i have updated thread count as three then what will happen so if you doesn't know about all those things then you should know about it otherwise i mean the interviewer will understand that you doesn't have a working knowledge at least you should have some idea like i have worked on it like yeah i have uh, used with uh, par uh, parallel execution with method not parallel execution class at least you are in a position to give these types of answer 
sometime interviewer want like at least you should start if you i mean if i mean even if if you doesn't know just at least try to i mean present something next is can we execute parallel test for different test data in data provider so here you will see two types of question data provider and parallel test so if somebody ask you like how you can use data provider then you should know like whenever i am going to create a data provider it will be returning to d array so in this way you can create a data provider and you can give the name of that data provider and you will pass the data provider in your test case like this is the data provider this is data provider class and we need to pick it so once you initialized or uh, created a method for data provider then you have to pass the parameter like this data provider will be returning these two things so you have to pass the parameter in your test case so there are things like uh, i mean if you know about data provider then obviously you know how you can uh, how we use data provider so just uh, this question is all about that difference between data provider and parameter good question something is like static and data provider is dynamic in parameter parameterization you used to declare parameter in the test and you xml like this is the name of the param this is a value and when you uh, use this parameter in your test case then you will be passing the uh, the uh, some method with parameter like this but in data provider you can use the excel reading code or you can put n number of data in data provider for each line of data your test case will execute suppose in data provider you have added 10 key value pair then your test case will execute 10 times it will pick one row get the data from the one row and return it to the test case now test case will execute for that particular username password now it will go back to the data uh, provider read the second row and something like this used to happen can you uh, next question how can you run smoke or regression test case is in test ng so this is all about like how you can execute because there is no tagging is there but anyhow you have grouping your test cases or grouping can be done like these uh, these three classes are the part of my smoke test case and these 20 classes are the part of my regression test case even if you can create uh, two different xml file one for smoke one for regression and this is uh, the way you can use for executing your test ng test case next is uh, different uh, uh, this is uh, related to selenium different exception so when i say exception then obviously if you have a working knowledge in selenium then obviously you know about what all exception might occur so if you are using implicit weight explicit explicit weight you know what all exceptions are coming while we used to handle the exception or handling exception through weight like i'm using implicit weight what will happen if that weight expire and what exception i will get timeout exception in case of explicit weight i used to get no such element exception so there are multiple types of exception web driver exception uh, uh, stale element exception i mean this is stale element exception i mean the next question is obviously the stale element so these are the things like you should know no such alert pre uh, present element not visible something like this element not interactable so these are the exception that you might face in selenium so there are some exception which is java with exception like runtime or compile time exception but here interviewer want you to give the detail about the exception that you used to get while writing your test script in selenium only specific to those selenium exception next is what is stale, stale element exception how to handle a stale element exception so this is very important question and 
in this i mean uh, steel element exception is just because sometimes uh, in your dome some element is not visible or not available or sometimes developer has removed that element that's why it is not visible in your dome or your script is waiting for that element something like this so when i say stale element exception it means to say you, you i mean you have seen guys suppose you have uh, written some test case that it will go to this x url and verify this header is available on the page but what will happen your script is waiting for that element to be verified but your internet is slow or anyhow your website is slow but and your page is still getting loaded in this case you still is your script is waiting for that element but your page is being loaded again and again so what will happen after the given timeout you will get the exception so there are multiple things uh, while still element exception like your element is removed your header is not available on the page and your script is still waiting for that header to be visible on the page so this is how you can uh, i mean uh, explain about the still element how to handle exception even you can refresh the page and uh, there are couple of things you can understand about still element exception next is difference between find element and find elements good question even recent interviews i have asked uh, one of the candidate regarding what is the written type of find element so he was telling me list of string so you should know like um, it is a list of string or list of web element because we are finding an element exception thrown by find element find elements what all exception we will get if our script is unable to find that particular x path an element of that x path what will be the exception next is different locator in selenium very basic question how will you locate an element if there is no unique locator not even x path so this is completely handling dynamic locator how you will i mean you need to explain him like these are the method there are something like that uh, following sibling uh, 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 preceding siblings like uh, normalized tag something like there are multiple uh, there are multiple axis of x path is available functions of x path is available you can use that to get the uh, uh, unique in x path next is in page fact how do you locate an element so first of all if you have worked on page factory then only then you have to answer because there are a couple of things that you should know about page factory whenever we are declaring any element using page factory we'll use to write something like at the rate find by and we can write something like x path equal to this and we can initialize the web element so once any web element there then we need to write again some statement like to init that element and there are a couple of things like lazy loading that is uh, available in page factory so if, if you are not good with the page factory just uh, i mean uh, let him know like you doesn't i mean you haven't worked on page factory you are simply uh, declaring the element saving it to by variable weights what all what all weights you are using in your framework and how you handle the weighting mechanism polling using web driver weight so this is something like fluent weight cucumber so if you have i mean right now uh, i have seen many of uh, companies are looking for the candidate who has worked on cucumber so if you i mean mentioned in your resume that you have worked on cucumber that's why your resume got shortlisted by the hr and you can answer those question if you haven't i mean start working on cucumber cucumber is very beautiful very easy very beautiful and very interactive i mean you can see like what all magic you can done using cucumber so um question are some same gherkin code in two feature files is it possible so this mean to say is you have created two uh, feature file and you put the same text or same scenario in both the file what will happen 
is it possible or not because when you are going to glue the step definition path then what will happen is it going to work or not just try at your end is gherkin case sensitive how to pass parameter in cucumber so there are two things like scenario example and scenario i um, mean scenario with example and scenario outline in scenario outline you can use some if you want to execute a test case for multiple user you can use scenario outline and in scenario outline an example you can pass the number of users like uh, first one is uh, a second one b and c something like this so if you have used you know about the syntactical thing in scenario outline difference between hooks and background in cucumber why we use hooks and what is the intention of using background in cucumber feature file so just explain why, what is the uh, use of hooks and why we use that and the background keyword next is related to java abstract classes and interface difference between them next question could be have you used those thing do those two things in your framework if yes then where and what you have resolved it what you have used what you resolved in this next is map some question related to collection uh, not collection a map related question what is the difference between hash map hash table is this a hash map or hash table is uh, thread safe synchronized or something like this so how to i mean iterate hash map how to add uh, things or how to add key value pair and hash map something like that you can i mean you may expect uh, in this interview so this is all about uh, again tcs selenium interview question for 5 to 7 plus years experience so i would suggest you guys just start working on one i mean single uh, topic like suppose today i am to solve few question related to some uh, different exception when you solve it just write it down like these are the exceptions so that whenever you are going to i mean uh, attend any interview you know like you need to refer that ppt or that uh, doc file that's it so this is all about uh, tcs if you like this video or if you have any suggestion then please type in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe the channel Thank you guys happy testing